Hello, my name is Ashley and I'm an illustrator. I'm joining you today from my Toronto studio, the place where I get to be messy and creative and work on my art. As an illustrator, it's my job to create the pictures inside a book. Since it's winter time, I thought I'd share with you one of my most wintry books. It's called Sizing Up Winter and it's written by Liz Ann Flatt and illustrated by me. As we take a look inside, see if you can guess what art supplies I use to make the pictures. Let's take a look. Do you think that math matters to the animals and plants? What if nature knew numbers like you? Let's look at winter. Imagine what measuring could do. When winter winds blow, cold ice crystals grow. High in the clouds, is there one size for snow? The flakes float down, down, down to the ground. How high is the snow? How deep does it go? So I think here we just need to count how many snowflakes deep it is. Eight. Do the deer mice mind that a snowshoe hare takes far fewer steps to get its food over there? Let's see, the, the snowshoe hare is twice as big as, as the mouse, and it's taking only four steps to get this far, and this poor little mouse is taking twice as many steps for every step of our rabbit. Would a mother polar bear use her babies to compare? Which has more mass, the mother or her cubs? Let's see, this ice float reminds me of a seesaw. And it looks like the bottom of the seesaw is submerged by water. So I think that the mother bear has more mass than her two cubs put together. Now that you've seen some pictures, can you guess what art supplies I used? If you guess paper, you're right. And if you guess paint, you're right too. I use both. How about I show you a little art demo? Maybe we can remake the snowy owl together. All of my pictures start out as pencil drawings. In order to turn this sketch into paper, I've got to break it down into simple shapes. I use the tracing paper for this step. It will act as a guide to cut around. So let's start with the owl's entire silhouette. This will make it a good base to glue all of our parts to. Now let's trace out all of the smaller parts. Once I've traced all of my pieces, it's time to choose the paper colors I want to cut from. I'm going to use this light shade, actually it's white, for the tummy uh, and the face. And I'll use this dark gray for, let's say, the feet. This pattern sheet will be for the wings. And I'm going to use uh, black and yellow for the eyes. So let's start by cutting out that silhouette. Here it is here, it's the largest piece. So I'm gonna place the tracing paper over 
And using my X-Acto knife, I'm gonna follow the line that we had drawn on here as a guide. If you don't have an X-Acto knife at home, you can use scissors. But I'm just so used to using the blade that it's easier for me this way. So just pressing not too hard, just light enough to get a cut. And I'm following around the entire body of our owl. It's important to keep your blades sharp. When you use a dull blade, it's actually a little more dangerous because it likes to slide off the page. Okay, so here is our base. Now let's do that wing. This nice uh, half circle shape here. The great thing about tracing paper is that you can see the pattern underneath it. So you know exactly what your cut is gonna look like. Let's see, I think this looks good. So, just like before. I'm going to follow that line. There we go. Let's do the same with the rest of our parts here. Now that everything's cut out, it's time to put our puzzle pieces back together again. So let's start with that owl silhouette. And I think I'll do these feet first. So I'm just gonna take a glue stick and apply the glue to the bottom of the paper. Once I line it up on the feet, I'm gonna press it down. Okay, next up is our white belly. You can see here, it peeks through under the wings. Okay, so same thing. I'm just going to now overlap those feet. So now they appear as if they're underneath. Next in line is this tail, the back and the tail. So, keep going with this. And I'll line it up right over top of that belly. Here's our little face. And see how the face is now hiding the back? I love this little part of the owl. It's like the little crown, let's see. It's 
once again, this is from over here. And it's just gonna sit right on top and give us that really nice owl face shape. Next up is our beak, which is a very, very tiny diamond. So let's put that right in the middle. It's coming together well. Now for my favorite part, it's always the wings. Let's see it. You know, there's a way you can add a little more dimension to your paper collage, and that's by adding some cardboard underneath. So I'm going to apply the cardboard to the back of the wing with glue stick again. Just press it down until it dries. And see how it gives a little bit of a shadow underneath? Let's glue that down too. So really, I just have to glue the cardboard now because that's the part that's going to touch the rest of the bird. And you know, you can always use your, your reference sheet here just to line up things. So let's see. Looks like this wing comes all the way to the edge of that belly and his beak is just peeking over it. I think we're almost done, but I guess we're missing one of the most important thing, owl eyes. So to make the owl eyes, we're gonna get our hole punchers. And I'm gonna do the, the larger part of the eye with yellow. So, just make two punches like that. And I'm going to make the small pupils with this hole puncher. Do you see all the different circle combinations I have here? This will make sure I find the perfect size. So I'm just gonna do a little punch. Of course, if you don't have a hole puncher at home, you can just cut out a circle with scissors. So now, let's put, actually here's a little trick I use with the X-Acto. I pick up small pieces with the, with the blade. Oops, oops. <laughs> and the good thing about Glue sticks is they're very forgiving. You can move them around once you put them on. Up to a, per up to, um, a certain time, they start hardening. Okay, there's our eyes and let's give him the pupils. Maybe we'll have him looking to the side. Okay, now that our owl is all one piece, how about we set her in a scene? I've already cut up some things. I have a background here. Let's put her on. And I've cut some snow out. So maybe I'll just use some tape. Just put it on either side. The thing I love about snow is it can be any color depending on what the sky is or what lights are shining on it. So in this case, it's a nice purpley snow. And here's a little log for our snow owl 
to perch on. Do you see I'm just tucking it behind? So I'm going to put some tape on that too, just to hold it into place. And you can see it's looking a lot like our drawing. Let's see, maybe. maybe I'll bring the log down to there. Okay. So I'm just going to put some tape underneath, hold it into place, and let's put some tape on the back of our owl and we'll set her right on the edge of that perch. And there we go. Our paper collage owl is complete. Well, it's been great sharing my illustration process with you. Maybe you'll want to pick up a pair of scissors and collage together your own winter animal at home. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.